Liz, thank you. Well, doctors say that lung damage from vaping substantially increases the risk of COVID-19 in teenagers and young adults. Now, it can be found that p- young people who use e-cigarettes were five to seven times more likely to be infected than those who did not. Joining us today is Dr. Joe Gangmo. He's a pulmonologist at a stuff over at the Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center. And again, I think I butchered your name there, doctor. Go ahead and say it for us. Jimo. Jimo. There you go. Okay, so Dr. Jimo, first of all, break down this new study for us. Tell us a little bit about the study itself. Well, you know, the study was out of Stanford um, at University of Medicine. And what they did was they studied over 4,300 individuals, 4,351 people. It was actually a very good study. What they did was they broke it down in age groups from 13 to 24 years of age. And they broke them down in different categories, uh, both uh, socioeconomically. Um, and they, they did a, a good job. They split the group in half of uh, people who were uh, smoking and vaping and people who had not had that. The interesting thing about the study is we've always gone back and forth about other risk factors for COVID now. As you know, I, I mean, just listening to your broadcast and it's just there's there's so many things we worry about, how far you can transmit and these kind mm-hmm. of things. But they found that people who had vaped and people who had vaped and smoked together had a five to seven times greater risk of developing COVID and symptoms from the COVID. Mm. So these were people who had gotten so ill from that that they actually went in and got tested. So it really makes you realize that the effect that vaping can have on a patient and how it makes them much more susceptible to developing this disease. Does this have anything to do uh, contributing to the national spike in younger cases we're seeing now? I think so. You know, vaping has has really uh, become very popular among our in our culture and certainly with younger individuals. And uh, there is a misbelief that the vaping is not as bad for you as smoking traditional cigarettes. Uh, But it does have significant impact on your lung function. And I think that that certainly has one of the reasons it's causing a spike. Uh, Doctor, do you think the young people are getting the message that vaping is just not that great for their body, for their lungs, especially? I think so. You know, over the last few years, particularly, people have have come to the realization that it does cause impact. I mean, patients who have a a proclivity and are predisposed for problems with respiratory illness, like uh, individuals who have asthma or or environmental allergies, particularly they're having more problems when they vape. So I think that it is becoming uh, more well known out there. And unfortunately, it, it is or it can be a very addictive habit also. I know that companies are coming up with ways to stop these, um, you know, tobacco and other companies to stop selling these flavored um, e-cigarettes and everything like that. But what else, what, what do you think needs to be done to really uh, just stop young adults and teenagers from vaping? Well, I think, you know, uh, the CDC and, and other groups are starting to, to work on programs with that. I'm involved in one of their programs about smoking cessation. And they're trying to pilot these things to let people see early on. You've probably seen some of the commercials that they have out from the government now where they have a young individual. And they'll talk about how certainly these things can be very uh, problematic for them. They can develop cancers at a young age and they can be very deforming. Uh, it, not only that, but you look at their respiratory issues down the road about how this is going to have increased risk of asthma and other medical comorbidities. In this case, it certainly makes them at a higher risk for developing COVID, which is, a, a, as we know, is a a coronavirus. It's a viral infection. I think you could probably extrapolate to some degree that it's going to make you at higher risk for developing traditional flu and then also bacterial pneumonias associated with that and those things. So it really is one of those um, unfortunate processes mm-hmm. that people get addicted to that it, it becomes uh, some, something that's accepted socially in in their circle but it really does have a lot of bad impacts for them so right. i think education is the biggest thing you know talking to their clinicians talking to the people around them and just learning more about it and and honestly just points like this where you're going out to the community and telling them so they're aware that it is not without the side effects all right great insight there that's dr joe jimo he's a pulmonologist over at uh, palm beach gardens medical center Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank you.